Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Meta Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, your water, sit back, and let's talk about the astrology, human design, energy of the day. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. I'm going to try to talk as long as I can. My throat is <clears throat> not happy with me this morning. Imagine that. <laughs> um, I uh, woke up sort of feeling like I was in another world. It was kind of bizarre. Like, I don't know, you know, sometimes you wake up and you're disoriented and my husband's waking me up going, it's time to get up. And I, I'm like, okay, I'm getting up, but I was just awake. I thought, so I, I felt like I hadn't even gone to sleep and I was waking up. It was kind of a weird morning. And, um, anyway, and then I, I wake up, I realize my internet's out and I'm thinking to myself, oh God, here we go. You know, what's going on. And within about an hour or so, it was back on, luckily. So here I am, and um, <laughs> it's a crazy kind of a day. That's all I can say. It is a crazy kind of day. Uh, how did everybody feel about uh, Dinah yesterday? I got some really good feedback from people who saw the video that I put out later. And um, yeah, good morning, Mimi. Thank you. I, I don't feel bad. That's what's funny. I sound worse than I feel. <clears throat> I felt bad over the weekend. But today I sound worse than I actually feel. So <laughs> go figure. I'd rather not feel bad. I can sound bad because that just means maybe it's getting ready to flush through. <laughs> um, good morning, Asa. Good morning, Miss Debbie. Good morning, Vanita. Good to see you ladies out there this election day and this morning. And good morning, Chrissy. Chrissy Val says hi. And she must be new because I've not seen you in here before. So welcome to the Meta Cafe. I'm glad you've joined with us this morning. Um, Debbie says red tide. I don't know what that means. Wesley, good morning to you too. I have something extraordinarily special to share with all of you guys at the end of the day because I know, or at the end of my broadcast, maybe I should start with it. So um, you know how sometimes we've been talking about how when you have something really, you know, heavy going on in the world, um, that there is, you know, something that you can think of or something that you can connect with at the end of the day that reminded you of joy or happiness or pleasure or something. So I'm going to play something for you. I hope my son doesn't mind. I don't think he will, um, because I think it is the most magnificent thing I've ever seen. Um, of course, I'm par partial because he's my grandson. I want to see if you guys can see this. <laughs> that is baby Wyatt. Oh, and when I went to bed last night and I was worried about the world and all the things going on in the world, I just kept remembering that baby laughter and how I couldn't stop myself from just giggling while he's laughing at his dad who's being a ninja or something. <laughs> so I leave, I, I want that to be the thought that you guys have something that you can grab onto throughout the day or toward the end of the day that makes you laugh or makes you, re, you know, kind of be confirmed that life is fun, that there's something juicy and worthwhile <laughs> here on the planet. Today, my Wyatt is that for me, no matter how the election turns out, no matter how the crazy astrological landscape turns out, <laughs> there's always why it's a laugh and that innocence in that laugh and um, just the joy that parents get in creating the space for their children to laugh. And uh, anyway, so thank you for indulging me and in sharing that with you. So let's, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll send that to you, Wesley. I thought you are in the group that Brian sends that to, so I will send that to you. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, everybody out there. So good morning, Holly. Um, Lynn, good morning. And I'm glad to see everybody out there this morning. And I hope you're all in good cheer. This is a day that is going to be very interesting. No matter how the election turns out, there's some really key things happening astrologically today. So let's break it down. Um, I'm going to introduce you to something today different, something new, <laughs> new to you, and I'm hoping it's not going to be too terribly confusing, but it's also very interesting in light of everything that's happening in the world right now. 
Um, so let's start this morning at 5.02 my time. So three hours ago, the moon moved out of Libra and into Scorpio. In my write-up of this week's um, energy report, I mentioned how I thought it would have been so much nicer <laughs> if the moon had been in Libra on the election because Libra moon is so much more conciliatory and cooperative and, you know, has, you know, those big C's cooperation, collaboration and co-creation in, you know, in, in its potential, the moon in Scorpio, not so much, right? The moon in Scorpio is competitive. It's sometimes very impassioned and, and it's sometimes very, very intense. And so here we open up this day with this intense energy of the moon in Scorpio and it happens to be conjunct V Venus at this moment in time. Oops, sorry, I got to turn my sound back down. And when the moon conjuncts Venus, things are beautiful and in, in, in harmony. There's this sense of, of rightness coming that maybe that upturned apple cart is going to right itself in some way. And opposing Uranus today, the moon sitting in opposition to uh, Uranus that brings awakening and revolution and rebellion. And I wonder how that translates today at the polls, where, you know, how many people are fed up with the way things are going in terms of how we connect and care for one another and, um, you know, vote what their hearts as opposed to voting with, um, you know, against something, they're voting for something this time. And because I feel like, you know, when Trump came to power, it wasn't so much about him. It was about the the not liking Hillary. And so this time people seem more aligned with heart and soul and uh, or heart and mind. We could look at it that way, too. And I feel like a huge course correction is happening. And I believe Uranus is a part of that. And the moon in Scorpio, ever the stinging um, scorpion is in a sextile to Saturn. I feel like that is a karma correction, not a course correction, but a karma correction. And I don't care whether they're Republican or Democrat, if they haven't been holding themselves to the highest, um, to the highest, uh, integrity of the office that they're out there doing, they're going to pay for it tonight in terms of the vote. And that is as it should be, right? There, are, We give people these opportunities to go to Washington, D.C. or to go to our state houses and to represent us in the way that they say they were going to represent us. And then when they get there and they blow it up and they don't do what they say or they get, you know, beholden to the money in politics, then we as the people have the opportunity to karma correct. And that, I think, is going to be a part of what plays out today. Um, in about, oh gosh, another hour, the planet Uranus ever the pain in our backside sometimes is retrograding backwards into Aries. And you'll remember that it spent seven years. This will be the beginning of the end of its transit in Aries for the next 84 years. And so what he brings to us right now is going to be of high importance because he's going to be retrograding back to the 29th degree. And that is a karmic degree. And we're talking Aries energy. It's rebellion right? It is, it is bold. It is revolution. When Uranus first moved into Aries back seven years ago, it was in March of 2011, on the very day of the giant Japanese mega quake that created the tsunami and the eventual nuclear fallout from the um, uh, nuclear power plant there. And you saw in just that one incident the power of Uranus to upend things and to bring, you know, things into crystal clarity that it's an idiocy in that case to put a nuclear plant in a highly <laughs> earthquake prone zone. And, you know, it came like karma to roost. And then that ushered in the whole idea of the Arab revolution, the Arab spring, we called it, where country after country began throwing over their leaders and not necessarily in, you know, nice, easy, breezy ways either. It seemed like there was just this maniacal energy going on. And Uranus back into Aries and brings that back into focus for us today. And it has the most power at the moment it's doing that. So here within these 24 hours today is this power of change and likely radical change. 
And the change isn't about just, you know, punishing us. This in Uranus's case, isn't like Saturn. Saturn is karma and there's the consequences to our actions in Saturn. But in Uranus, it's about breaking free. And what do we need to break free? And what are we breaking free of? Right? That's another question. So all of us, by the way, have this happening in our own personal charts. So in your own chart, wherever Aries, the Aries um, Taurus border is in your chart is where you're breaking free. And in my own particular chart, that's in my 10th house of career and profession, what I do with you all. And that has been a huge theme for me over the last couple of weeks, especially, but also, um, you know, over the last year even has been building up. So wherever it is in your chart, you're feeling this energy building up of change, of uh, of a revolution of sorts that needs to happen in your life. Um, today, briefly, remember last week we talked about the North Node and the South Node shifting from Leo Aquarius, where they've been for the last 18 months, over into Cancer and Capricorn. Well, they're shifting briefly today. They they wobble a bit. And I don't want to get into the explanation of that today because it's highly technical. And blah, blah, blah. I just, my mind won't go there today. Um, but periodically, just as the nodes are about to change, they'll sort of jump forward into the, the new sign and then they'll back go backward into the old sign. So they wobble a bit until uh, the wobble period for us is from today until the 15th of November. So after next week, they're fully in Cancer and Capricorn, but right now they're wobbly. And today, briefly, the North Node moves backward into Cancer and spends a good chunk of the day in the Cancer Capricorn arena. And that is where our hearts and our souls align. And they align in a way that's nurturing, that's inclusive, that's family oriented, and that's home oriented. And there's you know, this is like a double-edged sword, double-edged sword. I see it, it, it could possibly play out in two ways. One of the main hot button conversations in our country is about immigration. So we have this choice with cancer in, uh, or with the North Node briefly touching in cancer. It's do we stay along our protective course, you know, where the idea of building a wall and keeping people out holds sway, which is a distinct negative in terms of cancer energy when it becomes overprotective. And on the other side, is it that we fall to the other negative, positive, the other pendulum swing, which is being overly inclusive? And I don't mean that you can ever really be overly inclusive. I like that idea of inclusivity. But do we fall into the over um, uh, abundance of nurturing where we, you know, give us your tired, your poor, your teeming masses yearning to be free, right? And we bring them all in. So ideally, we will learn the lesson of how to do this in a way that's sustainable. Remember, the other end of this, the south node is Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which is all about sustainability. Can we? This is the question. And I, there's a kind and gentle way to do this. I guarantee it. But is it necessary for us to take in this whole entire, you know, immigration caravan? Um, or is there a way that we can do something to help them that doesn't include having to bring them all here into this country? I don't know the answers, but these are the questions. And the answers come when we use our hearts in, and heads in alignment and not, um, you know, trying to ignore the problem or using only pure logic or only using the heart. But I would say if we always default to how would we want to be treated? right? How would we want to be treated? The golden rule, do unto others only as you would have them do unto you. That is the golden rule. Jesus gave it to us. God's given it to us. Any, any major religion has that as one of its tenets is about how we care for one another should be based on how we would want to be treated. That's the little piece I think that's been missing in this country. How would we want to be treated? There's a very poignant scene in uh, The Day After Tomorrow, which is a movie about global warming gone amok and how it changes our world and giant storms come, you know, out of the north and create freezing, you know, here in the United States, way down into the south, flooding waters coming up from the bottom. And literally the only country available for us to immigrate to emigrate to is Mexico. And there's this poignant scene at the end where the borders close and the people from the United States that want to make it into Mexico because it's warmer and safer and drier there can't get there. 
right? In reverse immigration, reverse, um, uh, I, it, I don't know. It's just an interesting thought, right? What happens if sometime in our history, we have to be welcomed into another country? And literally that whole event changes the vice president in the scene who's a very hardliner about making people pay and about closing our borders to people. And it's just a really interesting thought, right? What if the tables were turned? And that's where the golden rule comes in, right? How would we want to be treated? And again, I'm not saying that we let all these people come into our country, but I'm saying instead of, you know, treating them like they're, you know, criminals, let's change the conversation, right? We have that opportunity, right? We have that opportunity. Um, something else in the whole of the charts that I uh, did for you guys with the election astrology, it was really interesting because I totally left out the one piece that I really wanted to talk about. And that was Pallas Athena. Remember, we had this conversation in the summertime about Pallas Athena and we looked ahead to the election day. and We discovered, oh, my gosh, she is going to be moving into zero degrees Libra. She is our savior, zero degrees Libra, where they, we bring this energy of harmony and justice and equality comes back up to the forefront. And she sits here for a long time, folks. She sits here all the way through August, I believe it is, of 2019. And that is awesome because what I could say in terms of what she brings is us coming together toward common goals. And no matter who it is that gets elected, I think the message hopefully has become very clear, at least in this country and maybe even around the world. It's that we work better in a team atmosphere. We work better in teamwork than we work when we are cross purposes to one another. And this idea then of being able to find common ground and to stand in equality and to stand in justice and to stand in harmony is the high potential that we have with Pallas Athena moving into Libra today. She actually moved in on the 4th on Sunday. Um, but I had totally forgotten that she was going to do that. And she is one of the newer archetypes moving into our awareness, our consciousness. And she's one of the newer bodies that have been discovered and named Pallas Athena, which remember we talked about in mythology, she was born out of her father Zeus's head after he was cleaved in the head by, uh, I think it was Uranus. <laughs> <coughs> I think it was actually. And she springs forth fully formed and she is all she is all warrior woman, right? She's there's a, a sort of um I don't want to say androgyny about her, but she she is the epitome of the balanced feminine and masculine coming together in one persona. And so here she stands here today for us to bring us into um some maybe this new ideal, right? This new ideal in this, not only in this country, but you got to think people, countries from around the world watch everything that goes on here. I think, you know, the world watches us more than we ever really watch what's going on in the world. And for whatever reason, good or bad that that is, we have sort of a responsibility then to sort of set the stage, right? We're sort of the model that people use in other countries to be able to, they learn from our mistakes. And they, in a lot of countries, do things a whole lot better than we do in taking care of their people from healthcare, from, you know, economic standards, taking care of their elderly, taking care of their children. And a lot of countries, you know, don't do things as well as we do. So we stand somehow and, and I, you know, that that Libra balance or the Libra scales, I think sometimes the U.S. is right there. And, you know, people are weighing themselves, other people around the world weighing themselves against what it is we do here. And so we have sort of a, a, a responsibility, if you will, to hold ourselves to our highest ideals. And Pallas is here to help us do that, to hold ourselves to those ideals. Think about what that means for you personally think about what that means what would it look like to have a government that holds us to our highest ideals and not drags us through the mud and the dirt and the, the grease and the grime all right how's everybody doing out here let's see what are people saying <laughs> sorry guys um, mimi says yes i do remember the discussion of palace athena debbie says screw that i don't want to be mexican I'm staying. <laughs> 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 
Debbie, good God, where are you, girl? We're not talking about you being Mexican. We're talking about in the movie that they have to move south to Mexico because of the conditions in this country and how they eventually open up their arms and embrace our having to need to our need in our hour of need. The vice president says they have risen up and opened up their arms and embraced us. Holy cow, it's that kind of thinking that still holds us in division. We have to come together, right? Somewhere within you is a, um, a heart. Let's let's bring up more heart. Uh, how do I find it in my chart? Vinita asks, I think, is that when we were talking about Uranus? Well, Uranus would be find 29 degrees Aries, zero Taurus in your chart. And that's where it would be. I believe you have a Leo rising, Vanita. And so likely it's probably very near your 10th house, possibly your 11th house. Um, good morning, Linda. Asa says, my body broke down on me and feeling very heavy. Being here helps. Um, you know, remember, Asa, you're a manifester. And the manifester energy it has no sacral connection. So you don't have access to that sustainable life force energy, right? You have to be able to be um, re resting, right? You have to take time to rest. And if you've been going and going and going, um, your body's telling you, right? It's time to rest. So take time to rest. Colleen, good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Colleen. She says, I can't breathe until at least New Jersey results are in. Your results on the East Coast will be in three hours before ours are here on the West Coast. Um, so good for you, you know, if that'll come soon. Uh, Marianne Williamson is broadcasting live this evening. That's what I intend to do as the end of the day rolls near. I'm going to be listening to her live stream from New York. And uh, I love that idea of being able to be with someone as spiritual as she and, you know, being able to help put things in perspective. She comes on at 4 p.m. my time. So that would be 7 p.m. East Coast. Maybe it's 4.30, 4.30 p.m. Um, West Coast time, 7.30 p.m. East Coast time. So by then your results are coming in. So um, maybe, you know, Colleen, to take a, uh, a look at being at that that particular live stream. Um, good morning, Natasha. Uh, Debbie, Wesley says hello. I hope you saw that. Um, Deb, Mimi, I hear you, Janet. My allergies caused me to sound awful, yet I feel okay. I didn't even think about that. Maybe it is allergies. You know, now we have to be indoors all the time, it seems like. So, okay, let's see what else is going on here. Debbie says, I love Mexicans. I don't want to live there. Please don't interpret my words for me. Well, Debbie, you shouldn't say screw Mexicans then. Screw being a Mexican, because that would make us think something different. Um, and no, I don't want to live in Mexico either. It's hot. But I would do that if I had to. And that's the whole point, right? We weren't talking about literal. We're talking about in the movie and how I thought it was ironic that in a, a case of reverse immigration, we had to, as the United States, move south to be protected from the harshness of the storm. The movie is called The Day After Tomorrow, if you guys want to get that movie and take a gander. It's kind of fear-based, but... Um, there's some sound science there as well. So let me introduce you then to something new today. And it's something that we astrologers look at in people's charts. Sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it isn't so obvious. So I'm going to show you today. It's very obvious, right? Very obvious in that the chart, I looked at the chart for the day and I went, whoa, got to show this to you. So I'm going to show you the chart first. I know I've written all over it, but you can still see what I'm talking about. When you look at this chart today, this is of the, the moment I drew the chart. So seven o'clock this morning ish. Notice how there are all of these planets on one side of the chart and very few on this other side, holding the energy of this side. And this is literally right here is the line that we would call the midheaven and the IC, right? This is the dividing line. It's a natural dividing line, just like the ascendant and the descendant also draw a dividing line. So when we see planets all on one side, it really changes the flavor of the chart. It brings a focus to a specific kind of energy. And let me show you this again. 
So in this chart, in, in astrology, we can divide the chart up into hemispheres. So we're talking about hemispheric astrology. Let's just, I don't even know that there's any reality in that, but that's what I'm talking about here. The planets today are all lined up in the Eastern hemisphere. And there are on the other side here would be the Western hemisphere. Above the ascendant line is the southern hemisphere, and that's kind of weird, right? Because we often think of the this would normally think we think of as the north, but it's the southern hemisphere, and then the northern hemisphere down at the bottom of the chart. So, what does it mean to have so many planets? How do I move my pen there um, on that one side of the chart? Because it really does set the tone for the energy of the day. Any babies being born today, or at least at this part of the day, have this exact pattern in their chart. And this is a pattern of energy that's very self-motivated. And it's initiating energy. And remember, initiating energy starts something new, right? That's like um, manifestors in human design. They're here to initiate and start something new. And their action-oriented energy, this is highly actionable energy. So even if we didn't have an election, because, you know, 90% of the world is not having an election today, um, there's action orientation going on, and it's self-assertive. And it's inter it's just interesting to me that it's literally 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 planets in that hemisphere. And that hemisphere is being held in tension by the North Node. That is the only body really over here. We do have Uranus and Eris down here and a couple little pieces right here. But it's the North Node that is holding the energy. Venus is also up here. But it's right here where we see it makes sort of an umbrella. If I turn this this way, you can kind of see it looks like an umbrella or a fan. And it means that we've got to look to the North Node to find our balance point with all of this energy. And the balance point, oh Lord, is at zero degrees Leo right now. Later it changes, later in the day it changes to 29 degrees Cancer. So at least right now there's this energy of conflagration. I went to my, my Dane Rudyar right? Dane Rujar, an astrological mandala, the cycle of transformations and its 360 symbolic phases. And when you look at the, um, he's got every degree of the astro um, wheel listed and the energy that it represents. So I went to zero degrees Leo and looked it up and I, I can't even, I don't, I don't even want to read it to you um, because it's just the the one word conflagration, right? Conflagration, burn it down and, um, or upset it, right? With, I wonder if I, I'm going to tear that word apart. Let's do it right now. Let's, because to me, conflagration is like, let's, you know, burn it down. Let's see what it says. An extensive fire that destroys a great deal of land or property. Uh, let's look deeper because I don't like that one necessarily. And if we look deeper, it is denoting consumption by fire from the verb conflagrare, uh, from con expressing intensive force and flagrare to blaze, a forceful blaze. Well, we could look at that as blazing trails, right? Blazing a new path forward. And that's what the energy is set up here for. And luckily, as we move into the day, that that node shifts, albeit briefly, just for the rest of the day into cancer. And that nodal shift then brings us to more of that nurturing, um, taking care of family orientation, aligning our hearts and souls. Thank God, right? Thank God that we have some of this interesting safety net going on energetically today, because What's holding the whole energy is conflagration and yikes. I, I, yeah, yeah. So now if we look deeper into the chart, so here we have again our hemispheres, but you'll notice I have it also broken into quadrants, right? There's the fourth quadrant here, and that's from the ascendant up to the 10th house. That's quadrant four. Quadrant one is from the ascendant down to the fourth house. So we have quadrant four and quadrant one with all of these planets today, right, on this side. And quadrant four is about social expression, and quadrant one is about personal identity. 
So when we look at he the heaviness of planets the, the, by the number of planets that are in those two quadrants, what we really see is our social expression being equated with our personal identities. And it's there where we see this division developing, right? Because if we are overly identified with self, who we are, what we believe in, our identity, then we express socially who it is we are out in the world. Now, that is the right and perfect way for us to express ourselves. It's it's how we develop from, you know, little humans to big humans is that we find who we are. We express our personality out in the social world. So here we have these planets that are highly focused then in the quadrants that represent voting from your identity or expressing socially from your identity. And the other two quadrants, three and two, are about social identity and personal expression. So it's flipped. And so the North Node is actually sitting today in the third quadrant. And the third quadrant is about social identity. So we see that maybe there's this little, and no matter whether it's in Cancer or zero degrees Leo, it's going to be in that third quadrant where the expression is about social identity, where we're looking at ourselves not just as individuals, but as people, right? As a population or as a, uh, um, <clears throat> a nation or as a globe, perhaps, right? So it's interesting to be able to look at the energies in this way, because it gives us an idea. Some things, you know, to me, there's a, <laughs> there's a feeling sort of that things are fated, fated, like not faded, like faded, but fated, that, that there's a hand you know, kind of pushing us all in this direction. And in some ways that's comforting, you know, to feel like evolution, you know, I feel like the hand is the evolutionary energy and that evolution is pushing us in a certain direction. And it is hopefully in a direction of positivity and love and um, inclusiveness. And I feel like that is, but sometimes we learn about that from contrast. You know, you'll hear sometimes spiritual teachers, mm, I've heard lots of them actually talk about contrast and how, you know, sometimes contrast helps us see better and see more clearly what it is we really desire, right? What it is that the real direction that we really wanted to go. We've had enough of contrast. And so the possibility here is that we are able to see the evolutionary pulse that we need to make and we can move in that direction. And there we go right? That's kind of right here in our astrology of the day. <coughs> Excuse me. Questions. Um, struck tower energy with fire followed by rebuilding. I forgot about that Mimi. That's right. Um, some of you might not remember this, but um, when our when Trump was elected president, it was interesting because the um, the the periodical called the Econ the Economist, I think it was, had on its cover um, a whole tarot spread and uh, right dead center representing uh, the president was the tower card, the struck tower. And, you know, the tower card in the tarot is very um, scary, right? Most people, when you pull the tower card, it's almost worse than the death card because it's a picture of a, a tower on fire and people falling from the tower. And it represents a huge transformational shift. And of course, you know, Trump was widely known for Trump Towers. And so there's been this whole idea of the kind of energy he would bring to the table, which is that of this upset and this chaos and this, you know, fiery, towery scene. So interesting, right? Um, and now we have this uh, conflagration, right? Just gives me sort of chills about the day. Um, Asa says, I cannot find that book. Which this book, yes, this book is that is the I hope is what you're talking about. And this book I had trouble finding. Look how old this is. I mean, it's you know tattered and torn. And I got it on Amazon. I think it was um, in the used book section because it it's not published anymore. So if you find it, get it right. Get it if you're so inclined because it's hard to find. And um, yeah, that's the book. Okay. Yeah. It's difficult to find. Definitely. So, um, so Mimi, wow, indeed huge flavors for change. Absolutely. It's, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting setup and I'm not sure what direction the change goes in. 
I mean, I certainly voted for change when I, we cast our ballots in, in Washington via mail-in. So I voted two weeks ago when I first got my, val my ballot. And, um, you know, but Washington is the state of Washington isn't a big player in all of this because we already vote blue. We already go the way of environmental protections and we already go the way of inclusivity for the most part. I mean, there are pockets of, you know, that you know, are, are not that way, but for the most part, we vote that way. So, I you know, our vote, I voted the same way I always vote. There was no big change for us here. But there are a lot of states that aren't that way. And they're the ones that you're going to see are the, they call them the battleground states or whatever. So those are the ones that people are going to be watching closely, not necessarily what happens here on the West Coast. Um, so I feel like my vote was important for what I wanted to keep Washington reflecting. But everybody's vote is important at this point in time. Everybody's. Right. And it's, you know, you you can't sit back and complain about the political landscape if you didn't vote. Right. It's just not your you didn't exercise your right to bring about the kind of change that you want. So please vote. I don't know if it's too late. Some states you can register right now. If you're a registered voter, go out and vote. Right. You can't sit back on your haunches and complain if you haven't even done your civic duty by voting. So, and I'm sure that most people here have done that already, or uh, we'll do that later today. Uh, so let's take a look at, uh, Mimi says, it is, it really is powerful astrological energies today, right in line with what is happening, setting an intent for positive change, even if a challenging energy. Absolutely. We don't have to go. I, I'm not even turning on my TV. I've already vowed I'm, anytime I want to look at my phone, I'm going to look at Wyatt. And um, I'm going to show him again as the last thing you see before I leave this morning uh, because it's so powerful. But uh, let's finish up today's talk with looking at what the human design energies are because today is the first day of the human design week. Um, <clears throat> so today the energy of the sun moves us into gate one. And gate one is the most Yang gate in human design, meaning it is the most proactive. It is the most, uh, if I say masculine, I don't mean that as in, you know, a woman or male. I mean, it is masculine energy. It is the energy of doing, and it is the energy of self-expression. So the sun is in a very powerful place. And oh, I should have, hold on, I'm going to try to print up a chart while we're talking here. Um, so the gate one in um, in human design, isn't even, it's not, you would think it would be the gate of um, the beginning of the week, but it isn't, or the beginning of the human design year, but it it is not. It comes this late in the year. So interesting, right? Um, hold on, I'm going to print this really quickly. So you're going to hear printing going on. Uh, I just want one copy. And I'm sorry, I should have thought of that sooner, but you know, hey, my brain was somewhere else today. Um, okay, so when we think of the gate one, it is about how it is that we put ourselves forward into the world. Those of you who have, and this includes you, Vanita, those of you who have gate one in your human design, and I say that because Vanita and I were having a conversation about how she feels like she's not found her life purpose. And gate one, people often have that as their nightmare, right? They wake themselves up in the middle of the night because they just can't seem to have found their that they feel they're always questioning, have I found my life purpose or am I on my purpose? And so here we have gate one and, uh, you know, bringing us to the idea of purpose, right? So here is the chart for today. So for everybody we have, can you guys see that? It's the light is weird today, probably because it's dark outside still. Um, so we have the identity center. Here's gate one right? And it's moving up to the throat center. And then we have a connection between the identity center and the sacral right down the middle here from the gate uh, two to the gate 14, which is a financial channel. And then we have a connection from the sacral to the root center from gate three to gate 60, which is about mutation, change. Anytime I see three and 60 being highlighted and guess who's sitting at three? Three is Uranus and gate 60 right now is 
uh, the South Node. So change, right? We have to, apparently we have been doing things in a way that's been attached too much to the past. And so this is the energy this week of shaking things up from the past and throwing it out toward the new, toward mutation, toward evolution. So that's an interesting commentary right there, right? The channel 360. Now, for those of you who are projectors, manifestors, or reflectors, having this energy suddenly highlighted in your chart does give you access to energy, to vitality, but it's only temporary energy. So if you get yourself committed right now to long-term projects that require a lot of energy, you may be finding yourself on the burning edge of burnout, <laughs> right? The conflagration in your life may be about how you burn out. So my projectors, manifestors, and reflectors out there, take care not to get yourself engaged in activities right now that are going to be long-term unless it comes to you via your strategy. So if you're a projector, that means you've been invited into this energy. If you're a manifester, it is something that you are, that it was an idea or something that where you're going to initiate something, but not stick with it to the end because you don't have that kind of stamina. And then reflectors, you're waiting for 28 days to see if it is something that the reflection from around you is showing you the direction that you're meant to go. So the interesting thing about this energy right now is that it's highly change oriented, but it's also highly self-expressive and means, you know, that we are, you know, going with what it is that is in our hearts. Now, the earth, the earth is the one that's sitting at gate two. Remember gate two is sitting here. Hello. Hello. I feel like such a dork when I do it this way. There we go. Gate two. Gate two is the most yin gate, the most feminine energy, right? Is the most receptive energy. And it's connected down here to Jupiter, who is sitting at gate 14, which is our new favorite word, bounteousness. So we have the entire channel of finances here um, uh, in definition this week. And to me, what that says is we might be challenged to receive, right? We might be challenged to be able to accept help, to be able to accept what the world is bringing us. And in order to prosper, there is that giving and that receiving, giving and receiving, right? It's that same sort of flow of energy. And <clears throat> The earth, remember, I like to always think of the earth as being the trigger, the trigger for us to be able to use the energy of the sun. The sun is our vitality, our ego selves, our personality, and the personality is focused on self-expression this week, and the earth is triggering it in the gate too. So what are we receiving? And it can be from ideas, it can be in input from other people, it can be, you know, something that you see in your outer world, depending on your type, you know, and what your strategy is. So it's important to know what's going on here. Now, Jupiter later in the week moves out of gate 14, where she's been sitting, she sat there for almost the whole of the month of October, she, it's a he planet. Um, and moves into gate 34. Now, gate 34 is on the sacral, and it is the gate of, it's really called the gate of energy. I'm actually looking at the gene key for it because I think the gene keys crystallizes it a little bit better for us. In the shadow, it is the energy of force. And instead, we need to go to the energy of strength, right? But strength isn't at, uh, it doesn't come from forcing it right? It comes from being empowered. And so Jupiter is going to be taking us later in the week, about midweek. Well, the cycle is sixth. The cycle of this week is from the sixth to the 10th through the 10th. So from the sixth through the 10th. So from today through Saturday, um, we have this energy that we are waking up to of power and strength as opposed to the force or force, you know, we might think of as might, as um, pushing, as, you know, instead of holding and receiving as gate two is directing us to be doing this month, 
or this week, excuse me, we might find ourselves trying to force things to happen. Because, you know, Jupiter is a planet that wants growth and expansion. And if we want to grow and expand, we feel like sometimes we have to force something to happen. And I'm telling you, that's the shadow energy. That's coming from a fear that things aren't going to happen for you. So you push yourself out there and you're putting force into the situation. And if you're forcing things rather than being empowered or being in your strength, then you get frustrated, right? Or you get disappointed or many other kinds of things happen that are not, you know, in keeping with what it was that you wanted when you're trying to force something. Um, I think it's interesting. It's an interesting word in the highest, right? The Siddhi uh, in this gate is majesty, majesty. I think later in the week, we'll take up a deeper dive through the gate 34, just because I got to know what majesty means. What does majesty mean? I mean, in my mind, I see the queen or the king, uh, you know, kind of majestic in their royal robes. I'm not sure what majesty means here. So that'll be kind of fun for us to go into. So the shadow of gate 34, where Jupiter finds herself himself when he moves into Sagittarius, um, is about force, strength in the gift, and majesty in the city. So interesting couple of words, I think, right? Um, let's see what else is interesting this week. What else is changing? Mars is changing. You know, Mars is intensifying things for us right now. Mars is moving into the gate 30. And gate 30 sits on, let me show you in a human design chart, it sits on the emotional center. And where did my just now chart go that I have? Oh, I put it here. Here we go. So gate 30 sits right here at the corner of the emotional center, the solar plexus. And it's an energy of desire. And it's a pulse, right? It's the, it's not sexual at all. This is the energy of I want and our wants becoming so powerful. Whenever you see somebody in human design that has that gate by birth, it ramps up the whole energy of their chart. Almost like if we call it a red flag gate and by transit, it becomes a red flag gate as well, because those of you who don't normally have energy at gate 30 suddenly do. And those of you who have the energy have it sort of triggered. And so for let's see, and through the 15th of this month, um, we have Mars sitting out of the gate of revolution. I think he stirred the pot enough there and on into desire. And desire is an interesting energy. In the low expression, the gate of desire in human design becomes the lightness, lightness in the gene keys, the gift of lightness. So we move out of desire. I, I want you to think of desire as something that you, <coughs> that is so sort of cloying, it sticks to you. That out of uh, a need to have something, to feel better, remember it's on the emotional center, so it does take, you know, it comes from the emotional center. It is like wanting to, needing something to fill the void, right? And that desire might become any number of things. But if you move into the gift, it's just that of lightness. And it'll be interesting to look deeper into that as well. Lightness is uh, about not having those desires necessarily, still having things that you want to see happen in your life, but not holding them so tightly that uh, nothing can get in, nothing can break through the wall of desire that's around you, right? I want something so bad that I'm actually blocking it, or if I can just release that out to the universe, then it becomes light. And then in the highest expression, it becomes the energy of rapture. I could take that any number of ways too. <laughs> rapture. Awesome. Right. Just feeling so it, it, you know, beyond joy, right. Beyond joy, beyond bliss. What is there beyond bliss? I don't know, but I would like to find that out someday. Right. So we have an interesting week energetically. This is possibly the most energetic week in the in human design through the gene keys, through astrology that we have for the month of November, all the way up through the 15th. After that, it settles down a bit and things get a little bit lighter. But you could see for those of you who are, you know, working the project that um, 
um, gets where you get the daily astrology and then what Tam is doing with the art part, um, you could see, you know, how this week really is sort of like crescendoing. And um, you'll see next week, it goes the other way. It's like, the you know, we're in the uptick to the height of the energy, which really doesn't come to a point maybe until about the eighth or ninth. And then we begin the the down swing and things get a little bit easier. We don't have the election is behind us. We can, you know, be a little bit calmer. We can be looking forward to Thanksgiving uh, in this country anyway. And, um, you know, the change is done, right? We don't have that anxiety of anticipation of what the day may bring today. Um, although I would say that some cases, you know, some late uh, races may not be called immediately. Um, that's just the way it goes in elections, right? And um, so be prepared. There may be some things that drag out uh, a little bit, but if you stay true to yourself, remember that whole idea of this, this pattern is about your expressing yourself through social means, right? The biggest social mean we have in this country right now is the election. Um, but in the world, it's really what you do in the world, how you express yourself and how you stay true to yourself in the context of the social world. And it goes back, you know, the drumbeat all year long for us has been about being in alignment with our values. <clears throat> and I think that's another piece of this is that, you know, Venus is above the fray. She, she's on the edge of the fray. <laughs> um, she's on the edge of the fray in all of this. And I think she reminds us to stay uh, stay true to our values. Remember, she is still in retrograde. She's digging us deeply inside. She's calling in all of those lovely energies that we know the truth of who we really are, the truth of who we are as humanity, so that we can bring those values up and express those in the world. And that's the important part for us to think about here. All right, let's take a look. Any questions, comments? Oh, gosh, there's a whole bunch more. Um, Colleen says, thank goodness I need some calm. Bring yourself to calm right now, right? Bring yourself to calm. We can do it at any moment. And uh, I don't know if you were here in the beginning this morning, Colleen, but I'm going to share at the end what I shared at the beginning, which was what I am going to bring to mind all day long today, every time I want to get it to anxiety. And I'll share that here in just a minute. Lynn Goldberg, the gift of 28. Oh, she pulled a card. She picked gate or... <laughs> Kate. She picked 28, the gift of totality, um, the shadow of purposelessness. And she says the gift of 28 is to embrace the entirety of it all, the pain as much as the pleasure. Moving willingly towards the dark, you will soon discover that your demons are divine messengers. Amazing. I love that. We talked a lot about that one, Lynn. I don't know if you were here with us when we were doing it, but when Mars was transiting across this gate, we talked about it. Then the uh, planet Venus transited across this gate and we talked about it. And then when the sun came to this gate, we talked about it last month. And here we are now being able to see that we are embracing it all, right? Embracing it all. And let's see, Vanita says, yes, very lost and tired. Yeah, I get you, Vanita. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm very, uh, sometimes I tap into that myself, lost. The feeling of being lost is that almost like rudderless, like what direction do I go now? You know, what do I do? What can I, what can I even, how can I even affect change in a world when, you know, I'm still harboring all of these weird feelings within myself. And, you know, I get to play them out right here on the screen with you guys every morning. And, uh, you know, you're, you're almost my, my, um, uh, what is that called? You, you guys are my, uh, processors. <laughs> yeah, I can process not only my own personal energies, but the energies of the planet with all of you here each and every day. And we see the, you know, the high and we see the low, uh, almost every day here. And, you know, as much as I want to always be able to spin it to the positive, it isn't always that way. And I think, you know, this card that Lynn has pulled, the, the gift of totality says it all. It's not always going to be that way. But ultimately, joy, as we've seen with Saturn sitting at the gate of joy for this extended period of time, is a choice. 
joy is a choice. Even if the worst happens, then you can always choose to be in a moment of joy. You can always recall to you a moment during a day or during any other day where you experienced that kind of joy and bringing back that energy and that feeling of that kind of joy can take you away from that darker energy and help you be at peace with that kind of energy, right? And it, it rewires your nervous system, your neural network to be at peace, to be in joy and to be, you know, more joyful. And that's our, that's our path here. I mean, it's, it's a foundational gate in your human design, the 58. We are based in two major energies, joy on one side and imagination and creativity on the other side. And they both, they split and they move off in different directions, but they come back together up here, you know, in the head center. So we move through our lives trying to find joy, trying to find more love and being creative. It's, an, it's amazing when you start looking at human design as a, a trail, right? A trail and you can follow the trail through your chart. And <clears throat> everybody's chart's different. So everybody's interpretation is going to be different. And you know what? I'm going to go dip down here for a second and grab my card deck. I'm going to pull a card and then I will leave you. I think we need a card for the day. So 28. Thank you, Lynn, by the way. Lynn is going to be with me on Thursday morning, and she's going to be sharing. Um, she's an, an oracle card reader or a, a card reader. So she reads more than just the uh, 64 faces of wisdom that she's been sharing with us here. So I can't wait for her to share the work she does and bring to us the decks that she uses. So let's just see if I can pull a card that holds deep meaning. Well, let's see. That was kind of fun. A card that holds deep meaning for us in this day of extraordinary energy. And I get a polar bear, a leg up. I'm telling you guys, the whole deck wants to jump out. I, you know, the whole deck is like, I can feel this energy moving through it. So a leg up, card number 34. Whoa, 34. Remember, that's the gate that Jupiter moves to. So we've got these two little polar bears who, by the way, with all the things that we're doing here on this planet are in danger of extinction. Interesting, right? Um, sad. So let's look at what gate 30, I mean, God, I can't even talk this morning, you guys. So 34 is essential meaning is receiving help, delegating authority and interdependence. What a great word, interdependence. You know, maybe that's the piece, one, one piece that's been missing for all of us, no matter what your political affiliation is, your race, or your, your religious beliefs is that of interdependence, that we're all interdependent upon one another. You've come to a point where going it alone is no longer optimal for you. Life has a way of presenting you with the perfect people to align with who can give you a leg up during this next phase of your journey. Help comes in all areas of your life where you need a boost. The trick is to accept that aid so freely given. When you embrace interdependence, allowing teamwork and independence to commingle, miracles happen. Now is such a time. Um, in relationships, relationships that are healthy thrive on interdependence. It's important to recognize that you need others as much as they need you. You must allow people to support you just as you are there for them. That speaks to that whole sun at gate one and the earth at gate two, right? Times we need to be receptive and times we need to be giving. Um, you must allow people to support you just as you are there for them. This is a time to be vulnerable to speak up about your needs and to ask for them to be fulfilled. Trust. You will be met with kindness and love. Don't expect others to read your mind though. Ask and it is given. The prosperity message is now is the perfect time to seek advice from a mentor or business advisor who has been there, has, but has been where you want to go to help you get there too. If you do, you will receive very good counsel that will aid in your prosperity. It may also be the case that your endeavors have grown and you are in a position where you just can't do it all yourself anymore. Time to bring on those who can give you a leg up. 
Trust that help is available and it will indeed appear. Delegate authority to others so you can take steps toward your big dream. The perfect people will arrive at the perfect time so long as you step forward with just a mustard seed of faith. I'm going to read the protection message too, just because when the card came out, it was sort of like, you know, cattywampus. And so the protection message just says, in case this was really meant to be upside down, or that maybe there's just a little bit of a challenge to this. And it says, are you always insisting on doing everything yourself? Do you have little faith that help will come, convinced that the burden of the world is doomed to remain on your shoulders? Your beliefs about going it alone need to be discarded as they do not serve you at all. Let others help you. Yes, it will make you feel vulnerable to admit you need a helping hand, but to be vulnerable is good for you have a lesson to learn. You must let someone else assist. You can't do life all by yourself. Once you shift your expectations, you'll be amazed by how quickly help arrives to give you a leg up. I love it. Great card right? Our little polar bears, right? Mom giving baby a lift, a leg up. All right. So now I'm going to leave you with a joyful thought because we all need, and I encourage every one of you to find something like this that is going to keep you uplifted through the day, through the week, through whatever it is. And hold on, I've got to find it again and bring it up. And oh, do I have my phone on silent? I do. Hold on, I'm going to bring it back. This is Wyatt. This is what Wyatt has to say. <laughs> He's cracking up at his dad who's playing Ninja Warrior or something. <laughs> all right, guys, I could go on forever listening to that cute baby laugh. And I encourage all of you find something like that, that you love that you can connect to that's joyful, that's innocent, that's laughing, that's happy, that, you know, just brings you to beauty, whatever that is, it could be a piece of art, it could be a song, it could be a bird out your window, but bring that memory up every time that you are tempted to go down that rabbit hole and feel, you know, anxiety or, or something, you know, akin to depression or sadness, bring something to laugh about. All right. I don't know anybody. I don't care if it was my grandson or any child laughing like that. I, you can't stay straight faced, right? All of your worries just get taken off when you have something like that to see. So I bless all of you today. You are such blessings in my life. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.